All right, today we're going to be finishing section 4.1. By the end of today, you're going to be able to define what a good approximation is, and you're going to be able to use good approximations to approximate. Today we're going to be approximating discrete random variables. Discrete data really is only described with a probability distribution function. The problem with that is it, that can be really long, and it can be it can vary widely and often be hard to interpret. You can use histograms, although they're not covered in this course, but those are very blocky and not very smooth. But with enough data, you can approximate these discrete things with continuous things, and that's what we're going to start learning about today. Let's do an example. On the left here, I have a PDF, a probability distribution function, for a discrete random variable x. And on the right here, I have a probability density function for a continuous random variable y. And I'm going to explain to you how we can think of this continuous random variable y as being a so-called good, quote-unquote, approximation of the discrete random variable x on the left. To see how this works, the first thing I want to notice is that each value of x is one-third apart from its adjacent ones. So one-third and zero are one-third apart, two-third and one-third are one-third apart, and one and two-thirds are one-third apart. Here's the idea. I'm going to start with our first value of x, 0, over here. And we're going to look at an interval, which is width 1 third. And that 1 third comes from 1 third apart here, and which is centered at our value 0 over here. And then we look at what is the area under the probability density function, which is above our interval. And I've shaded that in here. In this case, when we look at calculating this area, one can show that the area that I've shaded here is 0 0.26322, etc., which is approximately 0 0.25. But the important thing is that this 0 0.25 by looking at the probability distribution function of x is just the probability that x is 0, while the area 0 0.26322 is, by what we talked about last time, the probability that y is between negative 1 sixth and 6, sorry, and 1 sixth. So in other words, this probability on the left is approximately the probability on the right. Now we can look at our next data point, one, th one third, next value of x one third over here. We can do the same thing. We can look at one third, I've put it over there on the graph, and we can look at an interval of width one third against that, again, that one third comes from all these things being one third apart which is centered at the value of x one third. And again, we can look at the area, which is below the probability density function of y and which lives over this interval. And when we calculate this area, one can show that it is 0 0.2674, etc., which is approximately 0 0.63. And again, this 0 0.63 is the probability that x is one third. And this 0 0.6274 is the probability that y is between one sixth and one half. And so this probability on the left, again, is approximately the probability on the right. In other words, we've used this probability density function to turn these probabilities of our discrete random variable into 
probabilities of intervals of our continuous random variable. And that's the idea of a good approximation. And in fact, one can continue doing what with this calculation to find that the probability of an in, the, the interval of width one third, which is centered at two thirds, is going to be approximately 0 0.1. And similarly, the something we get for one is going to be approximately 0 0.02. Okay, what is a good approximation? A good approximation, of which our example was one, uh, is as follows. We're given a discrete random variable, x, and for us, we require that the values of x are all k units apart, where k is the same number for each. So, for our example, k is one-third. A good approximation for x is then a continuous random variable y such that the probability of x equaling a is the approximately the probability of y being like this for all values a of x. So what this fancy thing is saying is really that I've just looked at an interval of width k centered at a and I want the probability that y is in that interval. Let's do an example. Suppose that x is a discrete random variable that takes on values minus 4, minus 2, 0, and 2. If y is a good approximation for x, determine an expression in terms of y which approximates the probability that x is minus 2. Our first step is to look at what the width is. So what is the width? of our interval, that is. Well, each value of x is minus 2, sorry, is 2 apart. And so the width is 2. And so what is our interval that we care about for our particular question? Well, we're looking at finding the probability that x is minus 2. So we want the interval of width 2, which is centered at minus 2. To find that interval, we just do this. Well, we want to go minus 2 over 2 to the left of negative 2 and, my, and 2 over 2 to the right of negative 2. When we simplify this, this is y is greater than minus 3 and less than minus 1. So notice that minus 2 is right at the center of the interval from negative 3 to negative 1, and that interval has width 2. Okay, finally, what is our answer? Well, our answer is just the probability that x is minus 2 is approximately the probability that y is between negative 3 and negative 1.